Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I have a card for the Lawnscaping a Facebook Inspiration Team. I recently joined the team and this is my first challenge. I'll be sharing a project for each of the challenges but I'll also have a monthly feature over on the Lawnscaping blog and I'll participate in the color blog hop at the end of each month. So today's challenge is to use some sparkle and shine and so I decided to start with this starry backdrops. I thought it would be um, easy and fun to add some sparkle and shine to that particular motif. And so I began by taking the starry background stamp and I'm going to stamp it all across a card panel cut with the Lawn Fawn stitched rectangle dies. And I will clear emboss it to add some shine. Then I will do a emboss resist technique where I add some distressing to it. So I'm starting by placing the large background stamp onto my Fiskar stamp press. When I place this stamp down, I just kind of um, toss it onto my mat gently so that it takes its um, correct shape. Because sometimes if you try to lay it on the block, it might get a little bit crooked or something. And then I press the block to the stamp. And I'm inking it up with Versamark ink because like I said, I'm going to be doing some clear embossing. And I want it to basically appear white. You could also use white embossing powder, but I use a lot of clear embossing powder, so to me it seems more economical to just use clear even when I want white because I'm usually working on a white background. So um, I'm adding the embossing powder there, and I had tried to use the WOW Ultra High embossing powder because I thought it would be nice to create like some really defined stars, but I found that you need to use a thicker stamp for that because it the um, little bits of embossing powder weren't sticking to the fine detail on this stamp and so then I just went back to my standard clear embossing powder for this. I was able to stamp it twice and cover the entire panel and then I heated up with my heat gun and I made sure that my gun was pretty hot so that I wouldn't get too much warping before I started applying the heat. I'm going to be adding some distressing to create a nighttime background. I'm using chipped sapphire, dusty concord, and abandoned coral. I know that this pinkish orange color here is not exactly what you think of when you think of night sky, but it does have that sort of sunset look, and I just thought it would be a fun color to add. I took the um, the foams off the back of my Distress ink pads and added them there to my blending tools. I keep a foam for each pad on the back of the pads, and I have the larger pads, so I have to use a little bit of Velcro to keep those on, but I find it way more convenient and faster when I'm trying to do these techniques than to try to match them up or clean them in between. I'm going to blend from the chip set fire into the dusty concord. One of my favorite things about Distress Inks is that you can blend any two colors of Distress Ink and they'll blend really nicely and look great together. That's obviously not something that's as easy to do with different color markers and stuff, but what's great about Distress is that it, you can literally do that with any two colors and get a fun in-between color. I do like to make sure that after I lay down each color, I go back with um, the darker color um, to make sure everything's blended out. So like I laid down the purple, I laid down the abandoned coral, and then I went back with the purple just to make sure that things blended out nicely. So now I want to layer some vellum on top of this background. And I decided that I would use the puffy cloud border dies. I had seen some people in the past do like layers of, board, of cloud borders on some projects and I wanted to kind of try out that look for myself. So what I'm going to do is first I have my vellum cut with the Lawn Fawn stitched rectangle die and then I'm going to cut it with the puffy cloud border die because it also has the stitching and that way it just kind of keeps it consistent and gives it a really nice finished look. I'm also going to be doing some die cut elements with this gold foil paper from Die Cuts with the View. It comes with a lot of different colors but I thought that the gold would suit this best because I didn't want to add in too many colors as there was all those bright distress colors in the background. I found that once I started layering up the vellum clouds on top of the background, you weren't able to notice all of the colors and it really dulled them down a lot, but you can still see the abandoned coral underneath. And so I think that I will try that color combination again on a different project, but um, I do still like the way that it looks with the uh, vellum on top of it layered. So. I am going to be uh, trying to attach all of these pieces, but it's a little bit tricky because 
with vellum, you can see most adhesive through vellum. And so I was trying to figure out how could I hide bits of adhesive. And I knew that I could hide some behind the thanks, that if I glued the thanks on, I could then add some glue um, on the other side of the vellum behind the die cut, and that would work. But that would only adhere one part of the vellum panels. So I decided to add some gold foil hearts as well for decoration and interest and also just so that I would have more areas to glue the vellum down. So that last layer of vellum, I was able to put some essentially glue dots behind it because you won't see those. Once you stack up three layers of vellum, you can't see the adhesive as much. But as you continue and there's only one layer of vellum, there needs to be a different glue option because you will start being able to see through it. So as mentioned before, I'm gluing down this thanks die first and I'm using Multimedia Matte from Ranger. And that's pretty much what I'm going to be using as my adhesive all throughout. I've heard some people say that you can use the Multimedia Matte to glue down vellum because it dries matte. But I found that even though it dries matte, you can tell that there's some adhesive there. And it, actually in my card, I do get a little bit of the glue leaking out from behind the die cuts. And you can definitely see it even though it dries so, you know, clear and matte, it does have an effect on vellum. So I personally wouldn't recommend that because I don't like the look. But if you don't mind a little bit of adhesive look showing, um, you might choose to experiment with that and see how you like it. I was finding that it was super necessary to... Um, lay some heavy blocks down on top of anything that I glued down because the vellum is really easily warping and if I don't adhere it down um, and make sure that it's, it's pressed evenly the sides of the vellum will start coming up and curling around the, um, the, the die cuts that I'm gluing down. So you see here I'm trying to arrange the foil hearts. I'm thinking about generally the placement, but I also need to make sure that I glue them in such a way that it's going to be enough glue to keep the vellum down. So it's this interesting mix of a design decision while at the same time trying to make um, an artistic decision, sorry, um, a practical decision about, well, where would I need to put glue in order for this card to stay together? And so I ultimately decided to do a little visual triangle of three gold foil hearts around the thanks. And again, you're going to see I placed those blocks on top of it. And gluing this card together did take a while because I would have to, for instance, I glued on the foil elements and then I had to stop and then glue the vellum, put the glue behind the foil elements on the vellum, to glue down the vellum, let that dry, and then go back and continue that process, always um, letting there be time in between to dry and putting those blocks on it in between to dry. Once I had my main panel finished, I just wanted to back it with some gold foil cardstock, but I didn't want to waste a whole bunch of it. I didn't want to waste that full five and a quarter by four sheet, and so I just die cut a different stitch rectangle out of the center, and so that I could put that to the side and use that in the future. Now you see I'm going back and I'm adding, again, some more glue because I have to continue to layer the glue and make sure that I add it only one layer at a time so that it dries completely. And once I add that last little bit of multimedia mat, this card is going to be finished for today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafty videos, you can subscribe to my channel. You can check out the lawnscaping challenge. I'll leave a link to that in the video description, including um, a link to Ellen Hudson, who is the sponsor for this challenge, and to the products in the video description below. Thanks for watching. Bye.